Okay, and this is step two of the Halo editing process. Uh, in this level, or in this step, we're actually going to be creating the level itself, creating the geometry that makes up the level. So we'll be going into 3ds Max. And a quick tutorial on navigation through 3ds Max. On the right hand side, you have your uh, creation tab and your modify tab. Those are the two tabs that we're going to be working with today. And uh, in the viewports, by default, we have perspective left, front, and top open. Uh, to navigate through the viewports, you would click the middle mouse button. To zoom in and out, you can scroll using the uh, scroll wheel. Scrolling forward scrolls in, scrolling back scrolls out. Or you can use the uh, zoom magnifying glass in the lower right hand corner there. And to move around in within the viewport, you would click and hold the middle mouse button. And you can move the, level, move the uh, viewport around. If you hold the alt key, you can rotate the viewport around. Alright, in this case we are going to be creating our uh, reference frame and that will be the first thing we do. So under the create tab we're going to select box and in the top viewport we're going to zoom out and we're going to create the box in the upper left hand corner and we'll do this just by clicking and dragging out a box. We'll release the left mouse button and pull up on the mouse to give it some height and click the left mouse button again under our modify tab we're going to rename it from box one to frame now we'll zoom out so we can see the box in each viewport and we'll get rid of the grid by striking the G key now we're going to want to create a second box this box will actually be the level so under the create tab we'll select box again and we'll drag out a box We're going to adjust the parameters so after the box has been dragged out. We're going to select the length. And we'll make this level 5,000 units by 5,000 units by 1,600 units high. And you'll see our reference frame ended up uh, within the level. That's actually something we don't want to have because you'll end up having uh, collision geometry. So we're going to want to move that outside of the level. And we're going to select the second box we made, go to Modify tab, and rename this box Skybox. And that's just for organizational pur purposes, so when you see a list of objects that are in your level, uh, you'll know exactly what, uh, what object it is by the name. And we do want to convert this to an editable mesh, so we're going to right click on the object, go down to convert to and select convert to editable mesh and we want to select all of the faces of this mesh so we're going to go into face selection mode by clicking the uh, icon under the selection tab and we're going to click and drag over the entire box and you'll notice that the box does highlight all the faces highlight which is what we want under surface properties we're going to go to normals and select flip and this will bring all the surfaces that we're facing outward and have them face inward so we can look within the level. We're going to change all material IDs to material ID of 1 and we're going to clear all smoothing groups. Now we're going to want to select the two faces that make up the uh, bottom of our level. So we're going to select the ignore back facing checkbox and we'll select the left face and hit the control key and select the right face. So now we've selected both bottom faces. We're going to select a smoothing group of two for these and a material ID of two. And then we're going to go out of uh, face edit mode by clicking the face icon once again and now the box itself has just been uh, selected. And now we're going to edit a material. You can do this one of two ways. You can either go to the material editor with the icon at the top or you can just strike the M key. That'll bring up the material editor as well. In this case we want a multi sub object material so we're going to click the standard icon and go to multi sub object in the material browser. We can we can go ahead and discard the old map and you'll see it created uh, 10 sub objects for us. We don't need that many, we simply need uh, 2. So we're going to set the number of materials to 2 and click OK. We're going to name the multi sub object skybox. 
And under the first material with the material ID of 1, we're going to click on the name. And we're going to rename it to plus sky. And under the diffuse color tab, we're going to select the color selector, pick a blue color, and click close. This is more for our visual reference, uh, so when we actually see it, the sky does look blue. Um, when you export it and take the tag into Gorilla, Gorilla will see that plus sky material name and automatically apply the sky to those uh, those spaces which hold that material. We're going to want to show map in the viewport, so we'll select the checkered box here. And then we're going to want to go to parent, so we'll select the go to parent icon. And now you'll see that uh, the first material has been renamed to sky. We're going to go into the second material, rename this material splinter underscore ground to match the TIFF file that we created. And in this case we do want to import the TIFF file, so rather than going to the diffuse color selector, we're going to check the box uh, right next to that to bring up our material browser. And we're going to want to select a bitmap. And you're just going to want to navigate to the uh, splinter slash bitmaps directory that you created in the first step. Open up the splinterground.tiff, select open, and now it's been imported into here. Uh, now we're in the bitmap edit mode. We don't want to be in this mode, so we'll select go to parent. And we'll check show map in viewport again. And we'll go back up to parent, and you'll see that the uh, second material has now been named. Now we want to apply this material to our levels, so we can do this one of two ways. We can either, with the uh, level selected, we can s click Assign Material to Selection, or you can just click and drag from the Material Editor onto your box. Now we're done with the Material Editor, so we'll close that down. And you'll notice the sky inherited the color, but our ground is gray. We actually need to apply a UVW map to this. So we're going to go into Face Selection Mode again and our ground is still selected so we will go to our modifier list and scroll down to UVW map and you'll see the map has been applied to the surface just to make sure it's been aligned we'll go into the top viewport and under alignment we will select view alignment and the map has been aligned to our viewport now uh, at this point we are going to save the level so we'll go to file save as and navigate to your splinter slash models directory and we're going to save it as splinter.max and that's it for this step and the next step will actually be editing the uh, geometry that makes up the ground